This is working backwards here. This is the graph of the derivative, right? This is f prime. Okay, this is the derivative graph. We're going to try and draw the original function here. <clears throat> okay, this line is horizontal here. What does that mean? The slope is always, yeah, the slope is negative one here. Who knows where we're going to start? Oh, I actually gave you a starting point here at zero, right? The slope is negative one. Right? For the first part there, the slope is negative one, so something you draw it in there somehow. And then what happens after that? Well, the derivative jumps. I don't know if the... Do you think the graph jumps? Yeah, the, in reality, this kind of isn't possible. Usually rates of change to instantly change like that. Okay. In real real situations, it's it's you, you don't get things like this, where the rate of change instantly changes from negative to positive like that. You're going forward and suddenly you're going backwards, right? You have, you have cases where it changes quickly, right? You're going forwards and suddenly you hit something like a brick wall and you stop. But there is a, there is a graph, even if it was a, if you drew it, even if it was, I mean, it's quick, it's a quick change, right? Although there, I guess it's a change from a positive to zero, but here it's negative to positive. You don't have a instant change like that. On the graph though, if we were to draw this, suddenly the slope is what? Suddenly the slope is 2, right? This is 2. So if you're drawing that, the slope of this graph is 2. The, that shows the slope of this graph. So if I drew this, something like that, right? And then what starts to happen? Does it go down now? It goes up, absolutely. Because this is positive. You know that it's going to be zero right here. So up here somewhere. I could have made my scale better on here, but I'll have to go off the graph. It's going to start to drop like that. Okay. And then at that point, that's where it starts going down because now the slope's negative. So something like that. I mean, your scale could have been different, but something along those lines. Um, what the maximum of that function is. If we know the derivative, well, if we know the starting point, we can plot it all out if I used the scale properly here. If you have that rate of change up there, you should you should be able to find, I mean, not based on what we know at this point, but you 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 should know it. If we could, you know, you can work backwards just the same way as you can work forwards here. If we know the slope goes down to negative 2 there, back up to positive 2, I guess, uh, and then works on that. I don't know if I, I put us I didn't put a scale in here because I didn't want us to worry about that right now. I just want to have the general shape of the graph at this point to think about the connection. All right. Are we okay with that? Is there, a hole? there is not a hole in the graph there. There could be, but there doesn't have to be. Because um, this point right here, just because the derivative the derivative is undefined here. All that it means for the derivatives to be undefined there, derivative is undefined here. That's really weird. Oh, we're crying out loud. We're having nothing but trouble today. All right, so well, what your question was, just to... On... Right here, for this point right here, your question about what's happening at this point here, okay, that point. If you if you look at anywhere else, the reason the derivative is undefined here, if you have a graph that has this sharp corner like this, 
you can tell me what the slope is of this graph at any point. What does the slope look like it is at that point? Negative one, right? The slope anywhere, what's the slope anywhere over here? Two, right? But if you if you put a point right on there, what's the slope at that point? Anywhere over here, it's... Yeah, anywhere over here, it's two. Anywhere over here, it's negative one. But right at that point, what is the slope? Um, it's not zero. Because if you if you... The way we define slope, remember the definition of the derivative says put a point at the point you're looking at. If we were to if we were to try and uh, look at what the derivative is here, if we wrote the definition of the derivative from this side, we'd get that the slope's two. If, however, we put the point on the other side, like if h was negative, okay, if this was on this side, we'd get that the slope is negative one, right? The left and the right sides don't agree with that. Any other point, it works, right? If I if I looked at the slope of the the point up there, and I came from the left, it would be the same as if I came from the from the right. Um, maybe we can go back to this and uh, okay, but this is still the slope of the line, right? This is the slope of this graph. The slope on this side everywhere is. What is it? Negative one, right? It's it's like this line's not changing because the slope's always negative one. If I go to the other side though, what's the slope? Positive one, right? If right in the middle here, what happens? Okay, the line isn't there because the 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 derivative in the middle there is undefined, right? Because if you have, it has to match coming from either side, right? The way we define the derivative is we take another point and we push it close to there, but it has to be the same from both sides. The slope should not be plus or minus one. It's there is no slope. What for that instant? I mean, here the here the graph's going down. Here the graph's going up. Is it going up or down at that instant in the middle? You don't know, right? If you looked at it from the left side, it looks like it's going down. But if you look from the right side, it looks like it's going up. Is that enough to say that it's zero? Not necessarily, right? It's not a smooth change here. If we change this to a something that changes smoothly in the middle, what's it going to look like? Give me a. We'll just use a parabola, x squared. You put x squared in the middle. Uh, minus one, so it ends up in that same spot there. Okay, squared. Okay, so you have that function. Now it's smooth in the middle. This, now the derivative is going to change more smoothly from one side to the other here. As this gets to that point down the bottom, from the from the left side, what does it look like the derivative is there? Zero. Looks like it's zero, right? And from the right side, it looks like it's zero. You see the dot from the, the this dot is the tracing out the derivative, right? From the right side it's zero, and from the left side it's zero. The derivative of that thing is the same from both sides there. Okay. It isn't that it's undefined there because from the left and the right it appears that it's approaching the same thing. How many undos do we have to do? Whereas for this to, for this side, you notice where the dot is there. The derivative is at negative one the whole time. Whereas in this side, it's at positive one. The derivative can't suddenly jump from there to there. That's going to be where it's undefined. Because is it is it that side or that side? We define derivatives with limits. And if the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit don't agree, then it then it doesn't that limit doesn't exist and the derivative doesn't exist. Okay? It has to be a smooth change if you think about it visually. The, the curve has to change smoothly from the one derivative to the other, or from one point to the other. Okay, so that's what the idea is here, the left hand and the right hand derivative. The definition of the derivative, actually we should stop this here and...